Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. We've got an awesome topic. For those who have seen the video that we've put out, whole series around GGF models, uh, we've done one on LM Studio recently and how you integrate into LM Studio. Today, we're gonna be talking about one of the single most popular ways that people are running and deploying open source large language models on a laptop. And that is, for those who don't know, you can look up at the top of the screen of my terminal, Olama Run. Once you actually download the Olama executable, I believe right now it's only on Mac it might be on Linux as well. I think it's coming on Windows. Once you download and you install it, it gives you this great command line tool that enables you then with one simple line from the command line to immediately launch interactive session with a model. So that's actually what we're gonna do here to start this discussion today. So you can see it's actually pulled in that model. And one of their sort of hello world examples is um, why is the sky blue? So I hope you're not gonna get tired of that. We're gonna use it a few times throughout the discussion today. But what's brilliant about this is here, you're immediately up and running and it's immediately a chat-like experience. They actually stream the output so you can see it as it's coming out and you can immediately chat and start interacting with a Llama 2 7 billion parameter chat model. But one of the questions that we keep getting within LLMware is, well, how do I I integrate this because this is an amazing experience. It gives you a great way to start interacting and experimenting and playing and kind of learning about different models. But how do I actually connect this environment into something programmatic that I want to do in terms of connecting and integrating a model like this into a workflow? So that is the topic for today's video. We're going to show how you integrate Olama model, um, like the model we're just looking at here, a Llama 2. We're going to show you how in just a couple of lines of code, you can pull it into LLMware start invoking it in a first tier way and start embedding it into more complex RAG workflows. So let's flip over. We're gonna look at a script. This is actually an example that we have up in our LLMware repository. It's the using Olama models script. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually show how easy it is to register to Olama models. We're gonna check that the model is actually there in the model catalog. We're then gonna load it and run a couple of sample inferences. And then along the ways, uh, one of the things we wanna do is to show you an alternative way of implementing the same thing. So it's always useful sometimes to see how you can accomplish the same goal using two different things. So we're gonna show you side by side two different ways that you can start using the Llama 2 model. So just to quickly walk you through the code and then we'll actually um, execute it. To register an Olama model could not be simpler. What we do in these two lines of code is we register a Llama 2 model and a Mistral model. One important thing to note is these are the names that map to the Olama name. We're actually going to use that name in the curl command um, that we give to Olama. So it's important in this case to actually that those model names are the same names come from Olama. In the first case, we're actually going to fill in a few optional parameters, but all of these are actually the defaults. So by default, we can connect into the out of the box host and port on the local server that Olama is running on. It's just a local host and 11434 is the port. And then by default, um, we select the chat model type. So if you use those default parameters, then to register an Olama model is as simple as a one-liner here of just registering the model and the model name. The only other prerequisite to this is that you actually have installed it with Olama, which typically is as simple as from the command line to just say Olama run. And in this case, Llama 2, Olama run Mistral. That actually downloads the models, it caches it with Olama, and then that's actually the GGF executable that's gonna be served um, through the API. So once you've done that, we've now registered two Olama models in our model catalog. As usual, we can just do a quick check just to make sure that the model card is there. And then what we're gonna do when we get to step two is we can start using this model the same way we would with an LM Studio model, a PyTorch model, API-based model like GPT-4. Our model abstraction is if it's in the model catalog, you shouldn't have to worry about the configuration and the implementation details and in any given workflow without changing the code, change the model name and, and the rest of the code should be unchanged. So in that spirit, all you have to do then when you wanna pull up this Olama model is just, you look it up by name, we're gonna run that same model.inference, we're gonna do the same, why is the sky blue? then we're gonna get the output from the Llama 2 model. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight here, and for those who have seen the LM Studio video, I'd encourage you to watch it because we actually use the same model. In that case, we actually pull the same model from LM Studio, but I wanted to highlight that actually this model, the Llama 2 7 billion parameter chat GGUF, is actually in the LMware catalog already. So under a different name, without even connecting into Olama, 
you can actually just instantiate this model. Now we use a different name. It's a much longer name. Maybe in terms of marketing, it's a better idea to use the short name. Um, but the reason we use this long name is this actually gives you a marker back to the original Hugging Face repository where that model sits. So if you look at something like an LM Studio, this is actually the name that they use to retrieve this model. That's actually the name that we use in our default model catalog. So what we're gonna show you is we're gonna show you first how to do it connecting into Olama. The second way then we're gonna show you right after this is an alternative way to implement the exact same thing, just pulling from the default model catalog. And again, we're gonna use the hello world from Olama of why is the sky blue. We're gonna show you just by way of comparison a substantially similar result. And as we do that, we'll, we'll explain a little bit of the differences between the two. And then we're gonna move on. We're actually gonna load a Mistral. This was the second Olama model that we put in our catalog. And in this case, we actually wanna connect it to a context passage. So in really thinking about how you would want to use this programmatically, it'd be in conjunction with some form of a retrieval in which we'd be selecting you know, context materials and passing those materials in our prompt. So here we're gonna take a very, very simple context passage. This was just from the news, something about NASA. We're gonna pass it then to our Mistral model, ask for a basic summary. We're gonna get the output. And then finally, the last thing that we're gonna do, we just built it in because we think it's a really nice feature of Olama, is once you actually instantiate one of these models, it actually has a discover capability. So it's a unique feature we've built in for any of the Olama models. You can just say discover models. What that's actually going to do, it's going to call the Olama API and it's going to pull back this really nice dictionary output so you can quickly see what Olama models you actually have available in your catalog in a really nice way then if you want to use other models. So this is what we're going to walk through when we show the demo. The last thing that I just wanted to highlight is um, there's a whole series of videos that we've been doing on these topics. There's also a bunch of really, really interesting example sample code that we have in our repository. If you're interested in this topic, we'd encourage you check out this example, but then also go ahead and run some of these other examples as well. So with that, let's start to run the code. And what you can see, we did register those two models. We just checked that the Llama 2 model was there. We're now actually, the model's being loaded locally in the Olama server. Again, takes probably 15 to 20 seconds. You can see it actually generates an output here. You can see this is the output that it gives you. And again, as always, what we attach then is some of the standard usage data, the inputs, the outputs, the processing time associated with it. And then what we're gonna do is we said side by side, we're gonna load the exact same model a different way through the LMware catalog. And what's just interesting is it gives a very similar answer. Now there was a small difference, as I mentioned, the Llama 2 model is four bit quantized, but it uses something called the 4Q0 method. We actually were using the 4QKM method. There's a minor, minor difference in how it handles some parameters. The 4KM is a slightly larger binary, but both are gonna give pretty substantially similar results. So we showed side by side, one way invoked through Olama, the second way then pulling from the default model catalog. We then pulled an example from Mistral. And again, you can see the model gave us a really nice summary of that article and listed out three points as we had requested. Gives us then all of the usage data in a consistent format. And then finally, we check the Olama model manifest just by calling that API. And it gives us a nice view that these were the two models actually that we had available in our Olama catalog. So again, just going back to where we started, it is super, super simple. If you're excited about Olama, we are. We think it's an awesome, awesome interface for starting to experiment and to work with models. But then if you want to start bringing these models into a programmatic environment in LLMware, it just could not be easier. One line of code to register the model largely consists of just the model name and you are good to go and can start building data pipelines and workflows around those models. So hope you've enjoyed today's topic. Hope everybody has a great day and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks everybody.